In this video, we will start with coordinate geometry. You will find this on page 124 in the Namibia AS level mathematics textbook Y equals MX plus C to success. Coordinate geometry. Coordinate geometry provides a connection between algebra and geometry. In a coordinate system, Distances and lines can be represented by algebraic expressions and equations. This enables us to approach geometric problems using formula and algebraic methods. Now, in ordinary level mathematics, we learned how to calculate the length of a line segment, find the midpoint of a line segment, work out the gradient of a line segment, and calculate the equation of a straight line. In this section, we will revise the basic concepts and gain further understanding for solving problems involving coordinate geometry. So let's go through the basics. The length of a line segment, this is the, it's coming from Pythagoras theorem, so this is the formula that we will use. The midpoint of a line segment, this is, I just add the x coordinates, divide 2, add the y coordinates, divide 2. And the gradient of a line segment, I'm just going to, um, it's the difference in y divided by the difference in x. Okay, and the equation of a straight line. Now in this, I'm going to emphasize this method. So we're going to work a little bit more on this methods now. So given uh, the gradient and a point, then I use this formula. I just say y mi minus the point, the y value, and then put in the gradient x minus the point, the x value, and then it's directly in a straight line equation format. And then if they give you two points, this is the formula. So it's going to be y minus the first point y, x minus the first point x, uh, second point minus first point y, uh, second point x minus first point x. And then I substitute and then I just cross multiply and I also get. So on this AS level, we will just focus on this method. Okay. Now, there I just helped you. So apart from the line y equals mx plus c, there are two other useful formula for the equation of a straight line. So it's this one and this one. That's what I showed you there. Okay. Let's start. Let's look at an example. The point A has coordinate this and the point B has coordinate this. The point C is the midpoint of AB. Find the equation of the line through A, which is perpendicular to this point. Now, if the first thing, the line through 3 and 1, it's the perpendicular to the line this. Okay, so, so I'm going to read again and I'm going to give you a few informations. Um, this is the two points. This is A, A, this is B, B. The point C is the midpoint, we know that. Find the equation through A, which is perpendicular. Now, this is just almost like a half line. Now, if you can remember perpendicular, then the gradients are reciprocals with different signs. Okay, so <clears throat> this is basically, if it's 2 over 1, it's going to be 1 over 2, and it's going to be negative 1 over 2. And then, I'm just going to use that formula which I showed you. I have the gradient and I know it's through the point A. And where is my point A? There is my point A. So I substitute. Uh, can I just show you? There's the point A. So if this is point A, this is your X, this is your Y. So in the place of Y, I substitute 1. There's the gradient, um, the perpendicular gradient. And then I substitute X. And then I just simplify. Okay. So I think... Especially on ordinary level, I use sometimes other methods, so, but on AS level, I just want to emphasize this method. This is the method that we use. So find the distance AS. Now this is just going to be, I must first find C. So first get that midpoint by adding the X values, divide 2, adding the Y values, divide 2. And then the distance I just use, because it was Pythagoras' theorem, it was square, square, square. But to get that square away, I take the square. And I just make sure that you, there's a plus. Although you take the difference in X and the difference in Y, but you add the result. So please don't make that mistake. And then it's 13 units. Okay. This is just revision of grade 11. Maybe just emphasizing this, this other method. 
So stop the video and do try now 16. You can continue the video as soon as you are finished. Okay, let's start. C is the midpoint. Now let's just underline all the information. C is the midpoint of the line. Okay, I don't have C. This is A and this is B, but it's the middle. It's in the middle there. The line through C, perpendicular to AB, crosses the y-axis at D. Okay? Find the equation of the line CD. Okay? Giving your answer in this format. Now, we will first start with all the information that I have. I have that A. What is the point A? It's 14 and negative 7. What is the point B? It's negative 6 and 3. Okay. Now, if I'm going to do this, I'm first going to find the midpoint. The midpoint. And that's C. And you don't have to write the formula. You can just do that. You can just say 14 plus negative 6 divide 2 and it's going to be negative 7 plus 3 divide 2 and that is going to be 14 minus it's a divide 2 so it's going to be 4 and this is going to be 4 divide 2 negative 4 divide 2 and this is going to be negative 2 so therefore this is the point C but now uh, the gradient of a, the, the line through C, perpendicular to AB. Okay, so I must first find the gradient of AB. Okay, now I always like to just do this, just to help me. This is point one and this is point two. Okay. So if I must find the gradient, remember it's y2, I'm just going to write it here. Remember the y's is on top. In the place of y2, it's going to be 3 minus negative 7 over negative 6, negative 14. And this is going to be 10. And this is going to be negative 20. And if I simplify this, this is going to be negative a half. That is the gradient of AB. But don't forget, the line, bar line through C, so it's going through C, perpendicular to AB. So therefore, you can say, perpendicular to AB and that will be the reciprocal and that will be 2 because remember and I can just maybe write it here M1 times M2 will be negative 1 but the practical just turn it around swap uh, uh, change the signs okay now the equation of C okay now now don't forget this is the gradient now, what is the gradient the gradient is M so this is now my new line, it's still M. Don't forget that it's the gradient is represented by M. And now I just use that formula. Now, what is it? It's Y minus Y1 equals M X minus X1. And don't forget, this is my, let's just take another color. It doesn't matter which color. Okay, keep to blue. This is M, and uh, my point C, it's going through, so this is X1, and this is Y1. Just move this, move it a little bit up. Okay, so this is going to be Y minus Y1, uh, Y1, it's, put it in brackets, that you don't make a sign mistake. M, it's 2, and put it in brackets, it's X minus X1, what is X1, X1, one. It's 4. And this is going to be y plus 2 equals 2x minus 8. 
So y is equal to 2x. And, and if you bring that one, negative 5, negative 2, negative 10. Therefore, therefore, that will be. Find the equation of the line CD. Um, therefore, I can even, act, let me just do it like that. Therefore, CD. It's always very important, especially in, in coherent geometry and vectors also. Uh, when you do a lot of things, just mark your things very clearly. Because a lot of times you will look up and you will need information. And if that point is not marked, then you're going to get confused in your own sum. Okay, so that is now CD. Now, I'm going on. Find the distance ID. I'm going to just still move it up a little bit. I'm going to call this B. Okay, at the distance ID. Now, do I have point A? Yes, it's given to me. So write it, rewrite it. It's always good. Then you work from your own working. Otherwise, you, then you make mistakes sometimes if you rewrite the information. Okay, this is A and uh, the distance D. Uh, oh, it crosses the y-axis at D. So before I can do that, I can say, okay, this is A. And I can say y-intercept. They, they are talking about this line. So if you want to find the y-intercept, you always make the opposite zero, and that's x. So you're going to say y is equal to 2, but you can already see it's negative 10. Okay, so it's going to be negative 10, but the y-intercept is a coordinate. So therefore, it's going to be, and this is, don't forget that this is now point D. And if it's the y-intercept, it's 0 at the x and negative 10. So I have my point A and I have my point D, and now I can just find the distance. Okay, so let's just go to say ID, and I can already go directly into my formula. So it's the difference in X, and now, now again, if, um, okay, I think just because it's my first videos, I will do this. This is X1, Y1. This is X2, Y2. So, um, just for, because, okay. So, I'm just going to do it now for the first. So, it's the difference in x plus the difference, oh, and, and oh, again, if you start with 1, start with 1 here. I, I could have said y2, but I started with 1, so I start with 1. If I start with 2, start with 2 here. Okay. And, and don't forget that it must be square. Because it's coming from Pythagoras. Okay, so then I'm going to just say, okay, the difference in x, so this is going to be 14. Uh, so 14 minus 0. The difference in y, so this is going to be um, negative 10. y1, y1, negative 7. Minus, in the bracket, so just check that you have negative 10. Otherwise, if you start with this point, just start with it every time. If you start with this one, start with this one every time. Okay, but it's going to give me the 14 square. And this is going to be, um, it's going to be 3 because it's negative 7, so it's, neg um, it's going to be 3 squared. And that is going to be the square root of 205. Okay. Um, underneath. Can I just show you, if you want, and it can happen sometimes in this questions, I just want to quickly check here. Okay. If you want, if you, you can approximate it, you can now press the square root and you will get three significant. If they don't say anything, that will be correct, 14.3 units.